Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to talk a little bit more about using Linux in an off-grid scenario, whether that's some little shack you have in the back to keep yourself always running, even if the power goes out, or if you're in a mobile situation like I am, running everything off of battery banks and solar power off the sun. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about how you can estimate your power usage. Now, this is going to be a little bit more general of a video because there is a ton in here. So we're going to cover some things pretty quickly and then we're not covering all of the power usage. I have a diesel furnace, I have a fan, I have a refrigerator, I have lights. We're not talking about any of that. What I want to look at is I want to talk about running a big powerful processing computer. I want to run, uh, talk about running laptops, I want to talk about running small micro tower PCs, and I want to talk about Raspberry Pis. That's really the part where Linux comes into play. Obviously, if I was just using everything off of standard computers, using Windows is just fine. But because I need to watch power sometimes, running Linux on Raspberry Pis and other micro and ARM type situations will save a lot of power because ARM processors generally are less power. So let's get into it. First and foremost, the basics on power. We have AC power and we have DC power. AC power is easier to produce. You run some steam turbine, run some, um, you need to run some uh, electrical currents through magnetic sources. It generates tons of AC power. And the fact that uh, AC power generally is higher voltage lends it to be a little bit safer in some environments. In other words, if you look at your house power here in the United States, you're going to have about 110 volts in the wires and the walls. That allows you to carry the same amount of power in a much smaller wire. Your typical house wire is going to be between 12 and 14 gauge for the general outlets, plugs, and things like this because 112 volts requires smaller wires and has less energy degradation over a period. DC power, however, needs thicker wires. So if you're running a DC environment like you typically do in a uh, mobile environment like this, you might run 24 volt or you might run 12 volt. 24 volt is a little bit more complicated to run. It does save you a little bit of money and that you can run things through smaller wires, but there are some reasons why not to use it. That's why I went with a 12 volt DC power system here. Now, with that, I have to watch the wires, so as you see the pictures of how the batteries are hooked in, you'll see some honking thick wires. Some of those are OT1, um, meaning that they're, they're, I mean, they're getting into some of the larger wires that can sustain high, high currents uh, of wires without getting super hot. If I tried to run those through the standard house power that you have, you'd blow everything up and cause a fire. You don't want to do that, so that's why you run thicker gauge wires when you're running a 12 volt system and you run them as short as you can. All right, so now what I actually have here, as you guys have seen in previous videos, I do have some AC power outlets. I have a power outlet above me, a power outlet in this corner, and a power outlet right here that you guys can kind of see. These guys here are 112 volt AC power. What most people make a, a mistake of running in a mobile environment is they're going to use AC power with a power inverter for nearly everything. The problem is when you take DC power and convert it to AC power, you're going to lose about 20 to 30% of the power in that conversion. So anything you can prevent running AC power of in your mobile situation, you will be better off. This is also why I chose to run Raspberry Pis, which are inherently DC systems. Laptops are also inherently DC systems, although usually they have, lap, um, uh, they have AC adapters. It's kind of rare to get a DC adapter. In fact, it's the same thing that I have in my media PC, which is a micro tower, plugs into the wall the exact same way that a laptop does. So what do you do? Well, I use what's called a buck converter. Instead of going from my 12 volt to 112 volt, uh, 110 volt, excuse me, AC power, running that through an AC to DC adapter back down to the voltage, I use what's called a buck converter to convert the 12 volts from my battery bank up to 19 volts that the computer wants, and that allows you to run it without doing a conversion. 
we are still losing a little bit of efficiency, but we drop our loss from about 20 to 30 percent down to about five to 10 percent. So that means that anything you can run off of a DC power system, you do run off a DC power system, and that is why I hooked everything I can into the battery bank directly. Of course, it's not directly, it is all through a DC fuse box and everything is on their own separate isolated fuses so I can uh, situate things. So with those basically in place, next thing we have to do is we have to calculate power usage. That is the important part about this video. So the typical thing that you will find is wattage. Wattage is a power consumption, which is the volts times the amps. So if you know anything about dimensional analysis and math, or maybe you've done chemistry or things like this, you know that if you're taking the volts and the amps and the wattage, this is a more universal number. So if something is taking 100 watts on 12 volts, it's also taking 100 watts and 110 volts. The difference is the amperage it is using. So if you can convert things to watts to figure out what the power supply that you're using, that is a useful thing. Now, some electronic devices report everything in watts anyway. This is typical for your AC appliances. You look at the back of your TV, it's probably going to tell you the wattage that it's going to use, and that's you know gonna be around 1,000, 2,000 watts, depending on the size of your TV and how energy efficient it is. So that's the type of thing you have. Uh, if you have something like uh, I use my electric heating is an induction oven. That reports a wattage between uh, 200 and 1800 watts. So I can tell pretty quickly what the wattage usage is of that particular device. Now the next thing you have to remember is that that number printed on the back is the maximum peak wattage. The actual regular in usage wattage is usually about half that. Now you can use a watt meter, like the watt meter I showed in a previous video, that to determine the power that you're actually using. So in this case, then what I actually showed um, when I ran my power usage check on my big processing computer, despite having a 750 watt power supply, in reality and practical situations, when it's idling like it is now, it runs about 100 watts. If it's doing a process or something, it actually only runs about 150 watts. So I can use that wattage to determine the amount of time I can get out of my batteries. So keep that, let's go parenthetically over and look at batteries for a moment. So batteries, you have first in a mobile situation, you have a couple different types. You have your standard lead acid. You have what are called AGM, uh, which are a uh, gel mat battery. They're still a lead acid. You have uh, lithium ion batteries. And um, I think there might be a fourth type out there floating around as well, but they're, uh, they're, they're like the flooded, your standard flooded. So your flooded, they're the absolute cheapest. They have very poor efficiency. They kind of suck and they are ungodly heavy and they emit gases and you always have to check the levels and fill them up. You don't want to use them unless you absolutely have to. And you certainly don't use them in a house type situation where I'm here. Okay, so those guys, they kind of suck. Um, then you have your AGMs. I ran all my early testing on AGMs because they are cheap, but they are still heavy. They're basically the same thing as a flooded battery, but they're sealed. That's, I believe, what the S is, is sealed uh, lead acid batteries. So your sealed lead acid batteries, they're still fairly cheap. They are ungodly heavy. Mine weighed about, I think it was about 80 pounds for, uh, I think I had 75 amp hours in batteries. Now, flooded and so, um, the uh, sealed batteries, those two there, you can only use 50% of its capacity. So if those are 75 amp hour batteries, you can only use about 35 amps of it before you can't use any more. You have to keep that in mind. Now, the other one, which is a gel battery, those guys there, you can use a little bit more, but still not a lot. They're still a little heavy and they're still, they're getting a little bit more expensive, but they have a longer cycle life. AGM batteries, um, lead acid batteries, you can usually use them about two or three years and they're good. Beyond that, they can get shaky. The gel batteries you can use usually safely up to five years. And then the best ones are the lithium batteries. Their biggest problem, they are ungodly expensive, but they're extraordinarily light. My battery bank is 200 amps. 
and it only weighs about 60 pounds total. Unfortunately, it costs about $1,500, but they will last about 10 years. If you can pay for it up front, it is absolutely worth the extra investment. So looking at your batteries, I was talking about the amps. My one battery is 75 amps. Now I have 200 amps. You have to take the amperage into the voltage of the battery bank, which is 12 volts is what I'm using, which means I have, um, I have 12 times 200 amps of total capacity. That's 2,400 amps. However, I only can use about 80% of your lithium, which is a whole lot better than 50%. So I have 1920 watts. We'll just say I have 1900 watts of usable power. So knowing I have 1900 watts of usable power and knowing that my main processing computer runs about 100 to 150 watts means I have about a maximum of 19 hours with a little asterisk. Don't forget, I'm converting the DC to AC power so I'm losing about 20 to 30 percent in that conversion. Let's say then that that means I'm running about 120 to 180 amps, or excuse me, watts, 120 to 180 watts. What I need to do is I need to divide that into my number, which means if I'm just running the computer, no monitors, no lights, no anything else, I have a maximum use on a full battery bank of 10 hours I can use that computer. Obviously, my workday is longer than 10 hours that poses some problems. So we have to be a little bit more creative in how we do things. This is why I'm using smaller computers for everything I can and why I'm stepping things up. On little things where I'm just watching a movie, you use a Raspberry Pi, which uses very little power. If I'm doing full-scale processing video production, not only do I use the big processing computer as little as possible, I also use it in the middle of broad daylight like I am now. Because as of right now, the sun is giving me 10.3 amps of power. Now, 10.3 amps of power is approximately the same amount that the computer is using. So at right now, the batteries are not going down, but they're not charging either because I have the big computer on. So how did I calculate the number of amps? Well, we need to take, remember that your wattage is your volts times your amps. And if we know our wattage, let's assume it was 180 on the high end, 120 watts divided by the 12 volt battery bank means that my computer right now is drawing about 15 amps out of the battery. Now, there's a little bit more complicated stuff we're gonna get in here, but when the solar power is charging, the charge controller is gonna divert some of the power, feed the computer before feeding into the batteries. So it's possible we might actually be charging a little bit. If I had a cool Bluetooth um, a Bluetooth BMS system, I could actually tell and look at those numbers. I just don't want the security risk of any of that type of stuff and having open Bluetooth networks available. So I don't bother with that. I just keep an eye on the numbers uh, of how full the battery is and I get a general idea for what, it's, uh, what I have. But what I can tell taking the wattage of about 180, divide this by the 12 volts, I have 15 amps of usable battery. Now, at 15 amps being drawn, again, if the power draws out, if, if the sun goes out immediately, permanent eclipse, sun dies out, I'm left with just these batteries. 10 hours, that's about 150. That's right about the same number. So check your work. Again, 10 hours of use on the main computer. So let's look at the other computers that we have. We looked at the processing computer. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna look at the Raspberry Pis. Now, Raspberry Pis are rated at five watts and three amps max. Usually like, I think two amps max actually. Uh, the newer one's closer to three. So let's say three amps. So that's 15 watts. But remember, that's the maximum spike peak that it uses. They typically don't run on that. Now I did show you in a previous video about how many watts that was using. And I think it was down around seven for my NAS and it's closer to around three or four for my work computer and my Kodi box because they're not powering a hard drive as well and things like that. The actual is close to around four. If we take four watts, divide this by my 12 volts, this means that I can, the Raspberry Pi is using 0.33 amps. 
So at 0 0.33 amps, and assuming I have 80% capacity of 200 amp hours, or I have, um, let's see, let's do our 1900 watts of usable power, divide that by the four watts that we have, I can run the Raspberry Pi for 475 consecutive hours before I'm gonna run the battery. This, my friends, is why you use Raspberry Pis where you can and put something great on it like Manjaro for all the work you can. Obviously, it doesn't work for anything, but it basically the battery's like, what, you're drawing power off of me? I didn't know that because it's that low power. That's why I use those. Now, I do have one computer in the van that's plugged into the, into the battery bank that is a more all-purpose, has quite a bit more power. That is the media PC that runs Endeavor OS. That one there is rated at 19.5 volts times 3.34 amps. That is a maximum wattage of 65. I measured it at one point in time and I didn't, uh, I couldn't find the numbers, what it was, and my watt meter is in storage. So if I remember correctly, I think it was 18 watts is what it hovers at on average. So at 18 watts, this is 5.4 amps. That still though means that given my 1900 watts available, divided by 18 watts usage, I can run this guy for 105 hours before without you know before I hit the bottom of my of my power draw and these sound to me about right if I'm actually using the processing computer once it's dark I will see an appreciable draw on the battery after a few hours remember I have 10 hours with the big processing computer after lights out but if I don't run that computer and I'm just running Raspberry Pis or the media PC I never see any appreciable decline in the battery power, which makes sense because if I have, you know, 105 hours of usable time, I don't actually see any real draw out of it. Now there's other things that I'm also running. I'm running monitors. The typical types of monitors that you have, unless you have something amazing, ungodly huge, flashy, uh, Frank's 5,000 inch TV or whatever it is, all right, uh, unless you're running that, your monitors are about the same. They run themselves on approximately 15 watts. Uh, this one over here is rated at 12 volts, 1.5 amps. This one over here is a very rare monitor. It is actually draws 12 volts. I've ever actually seen a 12 volt monitor, but that one's plugged right into the battery bank for that reason, with a fuse, of course. And so with these guys here, um, they're both running about the same. Uh, while it's 12 volts, it's about 3 amps. This is 19 volts, about 1.5 amps. Both of them draws about the, the 30 watts maximum peak. In real world usage, it's between 10 and 15 watts, depending on how bright it is and, and other factors like that. So just assuming 15 watts, that means that if I draw my monitors in, let's just do by 30 because I have two of them and I usually have them both on. So let's take our 1900 divided by 30 means I can have the monitors on for 63 consecutive hours without it drawing the batteries down to, to exhaustion. So that's your monitors. And then we have the router, we have the modem, we have the switch. These are approximately half an amp each, approximately 1.5 amps. So now let's do a total power consumption. If I am drawing on, for example, the media PC, let's do a, a, a typical work day, I have the media PC, which is drawing about 18 watts. We're gonna add the two monitors at 30. We're going to add one Raspberry Pi at about four. And then we're going to add the router, the switch, and the modem at a total of 1.5. This means in my typical workday without the processing computer going on, I'm using approximately 53 watts per hour, which is basically 53 uh, watt hours. So if I take my 53.5, let's divide 1900 by 53.5, I can actually run my typical workday for 35 straight hours without depleting my battery. That's running internet, that's running my networking equipment, running my switch, my two monitors, the work computer, and the media PC. So that means that unless I'm doing heavy processing stuff and a typical night environment, I'm really perfectly fine on the size battery bank that I need. Now, the other factor I need to take into account is do I want to draw the batteries all the way down every day? The answer is no, because I need to make sure that they fill up. This means that I need to always make sure that I'm drawing enough power off of the sun.
Now I have 500, um, I have 500 watts of solar panels on the roof. And if I take this 500 watts, feed this into my charge controller, if I have, for example, um, four hours of solid sunlight a day, I completely fill those batteries back up. Because remember, 1900 watts of usable power, 500 watts divided by four, that would be four hours of sun. So I can get the batteries down, not completely dead, but I can draw them down about half through the usable current throughout the day and the night. And then the following day, assuming I only have four hours of straight sunlight, I will completely charge them all back up again. So there's a little bit about how you can calculate your wattage, your usages, and all of the other factors involved in determining how much power you have. You use that same process in all the other equipment you want to run, whether it's external lights, laptop computers. Typically, typically laptop computers are about what the media PC is. Although I think if you're doing gaming and stuff, or at least my older laptop that I was playing some games on yesterday, that does seem to draw a little bit more power. But for the most part, you can assume 18, 19 watts is about what your computers are gonna run. You can assume about four watts is what your Raspberry Pis are gonna run. Monitors about 15 watts. It's those big processing computers are the ones that take up the most power. So that's why I do most of my processing computer type work. I do that during the day while the solar panels are charging and the charge controller can divert some of that power directly into the computer rather than dissipating it as heat. So there's a little bit about it. Let me know your, your general thoughts and questions and what else we want to talk about regarding off-grid Linux. Let me know those in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.